and welcome to Let's Talk Electric by Waste Bank. My name is Papi Mabele and I'll be your host on this show as we take a closer look at the world of electric and new energy vehicles. In the next few weeks and months, we'll be diving deep into reviews as well as exclusive previews and insightful interviews that aim to answer all your burning questions. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what's coming up on this episode. In this episode, we take a closer look at the brand new and all electric mini Aceman. Then we give you a dose of EV news. Then we take a look at the difference between AC and DC charging and the cost implications involved with it. And then we take a look at where South Africans charge along the national routes and elsewhere in between. Let's go. And our very first review for this episode goes to this brand new and all electric mini Aceman. But let's have a look at the design first and take it on a spin. So this Mini Cooper Aceman slots in between the Mini Cooper 3 door and its bigger brother, the Mini Countryman. From a looks perspective, what you're greeted with on the front face here is a brand new redesigned light signature. You get this closed off grill up in front, some sensors, placeholder for your plates and air vents at the bottom. And then looking on the sides, there's some cladding around the wheels and the rest of the body frame. And then there's those flush door handles that you see coming through there, which is a modern and new design. And to the rear, you get brand new signature daytime running lights as well as a black colored roof over here it's a moon roof at that and then you can get the same color mirror caps in this vehicle what's quite nice about mini cars is that you can customize it however you want and then moving inside you get that clothed out dashboard and then a brand new infotainment screen around the center of the vehicle, a center screen at that. And then you get leather seats, but they're actually made out of recycled material all over the car. Some premium sound system, Harman Kardon, and then the boot space, which is about 300 liters. I think for now we're ready to talk about driving this car so that I can give you my final impressions. When it comes to driving this Mini Aceman, you're still getting that go-kart feeling that Mini cars are known for coming through, which I really love on this car. And because it weighs just under 1.8 tons, you're still getting that exciting feeling when you're taking on the corners, which is really fun about Mini vehicles as well. But we cannot talk about driving without touching on the range. We got about 318 kilometers from a single charge in this car, although Mini claims that you can get up to 408 kilometers. Those are LTP numbers as well. I guess it depends on your driving style as well as the weather conditions outside. When it comes to pricing, you can expect to spend about 890,000 Rand on this mini Aceman. And that's that from us and our first ever review on this segment. Stay tuned for more on the show. Now, before we get to the fun stuff, it's important that we understand what EVs are. Electric vehicles are vehicles that are powered either fully or partially by electricity. And unlike petrol or diesel cars, they actually make use of batteries or fuel cells that keep them running. And now that we've spoken about what electric vehicles are, let's talk charging. When it comes to charging your electric vehicle, there's two options that you can choose from. It's either AC charging or DC charging. First up, let's start with AC charging. AC stands for alternative current, and that's good for home charging like we are right now. And the current typically associated with AC charging is between seven and 22 kilowatt hour. And then let's look at DC charging. That stands for direct current, and that overrides the computer system on the vehicle to give you a much bigger charging current. Currently in South Africa, the fastest DC charger stands at 250 kilowatt hour. That means that for a typical car at about 95 kilowatt hour, it can go from about 20% to 80 in just 20 minutes. Now that you know the speeds involved, let's look at the cost of charging. When you're looking at home AC charging, that would range from between
between 3 Rand to 4 Rand per kilowatt hour, depending on the tariffs that you pay your municipality. And then when we're looking at public AC charging, that can be at about 5 Rand 88 per kilowatt hour. And then when we look at DC charging, and because it is faster, the charges there are much more expensive. You can look at paying between 7 Rand to 8 Rand per kilowatt hour using a DC charger, depending on the speed, of course. If I were to give you a real example, this Mini Cooper over here has a charging capacity of 95 kilowatt hour. So that means that charging this at home from zero to full would take us about 260 rand now if i was using a public ac charger that would cost me about 400 rand and if i was using a dc charger that would cost me at about 480 rand just to give you real life examples up next let's have a look at our ev news And now let's plug into the latest across the electric vehicle and new energy scene. Starting up with EV manufacturing gaining momentum in South Africa. South Africa's first 1 billion rand push for local EV production is gaining interest from global players. BMW's hybrid X3 production in Roslyn is already underway with the first full EV assembly expected by 2026. Meanwhile, Stellantis is advancing plans to open a local plant, strengthening the country's role as an EV hub for the continent. And moving over to point two, we're looking at Johannesburg piloting battery swapping technology. This means that City Power is not only looking at expanding its EV charging network, it's now trialing a battery swapping system in key metro areas. As part of its 10-point energy plan, this initiative aims to reduce charging wait times and support fleet electrification, especially looking at taxis and last mile logistics. And at point three, Cape Town's electric bus fleet is growing. Cape Town's My City service will begin testing its first Volvo electric bus later this year, ahead of a full rollout of 30 units by 2027. The city is also evaluating solar charging hubs to support low carbon transit operations across the Western Cape. And looking at point four, growth visits affordability challenge. EV sales grew over 80% in 2024, but still accounted for under 1% of total vehicle sales. High prices and import duties remain key hurdles. Analysts expect the local EV market to surpass 8.7 billion in value by the end of this year. And if charging infrastructure and affordability improve in tandem. And then last but not least, Chinese brands diversify the market. Chinese automakers like BYD, GWM and Cherry continue to introduce new energy vehicles. Recent launches include Cherry's Omoda C9 PHEV and Jaiku's J7 SHS, both boasting over 90 kilometers electric range and hybrid flexibility, offering alternatives for longer distance commuters. And that's a wrap on our news update for this episode. Stay tuned for more on EVs and new energy. That's quite insightful news. When it comes to public charging, South Africans have over 400 sites to choose from. And that's sites you can find on the national routes and even on secondary and tertiary routes. You can literally find them anywhere at your nearest mall, at your nearest hospital, and some office building have charging infrastructures too. But infrastructure still has a long way to go in South Africa, but there are plans to bring in more and more charges. With that, we've come to the end of our very first episode. I hope you found everything insightful so far, but please make sure that you subscribe to this very same channel so that you're the first one to know when we release our latest episode. Also make sure that you leave your comments down below in the section and share this video with your friends and family. Up until next time, thank you so much for watching.